Welcome back to the channel. If you've enjoyed my content or the information that I've been sharing as I've been figuring it out has helped you, don't forget to like and subscribe. But uh, we're going to work on putting a Honda at one and three quarter bar map, and I'll explain why in the video. And after that, I'm going to go over some HP tuner stuff and some screenshots and captures to kind of share what I've learned and also so anyone that hasn't ever played with it can familiarize themselves and see maybe it's something they want to get into. It's really not that hard. But uh, here we go. What I want to do today is get rid of this SRT4 two and a quarter bar map. Right now I've just got it rigged up and I'm glad I did because I'm not actually going to use it now. I'm going to use something that's a little, a little less boost capability but it should help with tuning it and resolution. So this is a two and a quarter SRT4 map sensor. This is a Honda map sensor. It's supposed to be one and three quarter bar which means it can read up to about 11 psi boost. And right now with this pulley ratio I'm only making five pounds. And I will probably, you know, I'll probably swap the pulley on it and maybe get eight and a half pounds or so. It's a, it's a stock four liter with a lot of miles. So I've, I'm sure I can't push it that hard before it before it gives it up. So, so this is capable of 11. That's all I'll ever need with this thing. But I'm going to get this off of here and show you what I want to do. I'm hoping I can put it on the throttle body. And after that, I will go through the, the HP tuners and show you show you my tune files right now and why I want to go to this and away from that. But uh, for right now, we're going to get this apart, get that throttle body off of there. This is the factory one bar map sensor for the four liter and the way it attaches in that little hose. So my thought is this bolt pattern is wider than that bolt pattern and this is not centered. So I think I can drill and tap out here just a little bit and make make it this pattern. And then I can just space it off just enough so that I can have a small piece of hose going in between them and then some little standoffs or spacers right here to space it away. And I think that'll work. And then it'll bolt on. It won't be hanging from a hose or rigged up anywhere. And that should solve some of my problems. This is what I've ended up with. I can, if I can find these a little shorter, I will, because it doesn't need to be that far off. Um, I forgot to get some eighth inch vacuum line while I was out, so I just cut the little 90 boot that was on it, and that'll work for right now. But I got these 832 by inch and a quarter bolts, and these spacers at this length already at ace. They're labeled aluminum spacers, and these are just stainless 832s. Now, they're, the, they're about this long. Like, I tapped it way in here. There's plenty of thread. So, except for the hose choice, once I get a, a new hose that's full length, I'll be happier with it. But it's not going to leak as is. And where it's sat on the car, or on the Jeep, it doesn't matter. It's right out here in the middle of nowhere. So, so it's fine. And that'll work. Now, it's got to swap out the plugs. Plug this off because I think it used to go to charcoal canister or, or evap crap, which I'm sure doesn't want boost, and you don't want that boost leak. So we'll get this wired in and we'll check the voltage. It should be one and three quarter bar, but that's just what I read. I'm not actually sure. Not until I actually hook it up and see what it says. Throttle body is back on. Got it wired up. I'm not going to put the the crossover tube back on right now. I'm going to key up and make sure in the computer I did get the data log stuff to work. I'm going to make sure it's not sitting at 100 kPa because if it is at 100 kPa that means that's a one bar and that won't work. So I'll make sure that that's working right as a one and three quarter bar and then I want to start dialing it in. I'll put the stock tune back in it and start dialing it in for that map sensor and then I should have plenty more resolution in vacuum and still enough headroom to add more boost later. 66 kPa atmospheric. That's a one and three quarter map. This is going to work. All right, the map sensor switched and it's working. Like I showed you, 66 kPa. Now, on my fuel table before, the uh, that two and a quarter bar right about here. 
was atmospheric and anything above was boost so I had all this for boost all the way to like 18 pounds or whatever to or one and a quarter bar is over atmospheric so I had like these cells <clears throat> for vacuum and that was a, a, a pretty big jump and kind of a pain in the butt considering I'm not I, you could make it run it ran pretty good it would work it was working but I'm never gonna see this boost so swapping it over to the, the one and three quarter bar I'm right here anything under here <clears throat> anything under 66 is that is a vacuum so I've got all this resolution to tune in now not in boost and up here this is about 11 psi so I still have 11 pounds of boost capability and plenty of resolution for driving around that's why I want to swap that now I unless someone else has more information there's nothing I can do you can't change this. Not this one. That's not what I want. Like you, you can't. You can't change this. It is stuck at 105. You can go in and change the map scaling. Let's see. We can go in here. General. That's not what I want. You can go in here and change the map scaling stuff, and you can play with all that, and it will change, and you could make your map sensor read atmospheric at atmospheric, but to my knowledge, to my experience, if you made it do that, it would be reading 100 kPa at atmospheric, but there's no, there's no cells here. There's nothing, nothing you can tune up here. So, leaving it where it was... And just understanding that anything below here is vacuum. This is atmospheric and anything above is boost. And I've been doing that and it works. Now somebody may have more experience with how you can change this if, if you can. From what I've studied you can't. It is what it is. <clears throat> it's a little more difficult to wrap your head around it. Because usually 100 kPa is atmospheric and anything above 100 is boost. But if you just wrap your head around, this is vacuum, this is atmospheric, this is boost. It's not perfect, but it works. So since I've doubled the injector, like all my, my warm-up stuff, my time-based, everything, I doubled the injector size, so I cut all this in half. I cut most things in half. The transient table I cut in half since I've doubled the injector. And everything else is still working. It's still using closed loop. Now, something I've been playing with is to get it since you're a. Let's see. Since this is now wide open, your power enrichment used to come in somewhere around here. But now, since this is the new 100, your uh, power enrichment tables need adjusted so that, that you get into power enrichment at medium to heavy load for acceleration. So that takes some playing with. And as I've been playing with this last night, I got it working with the two and a quarter bar. I've just got to play with these numbers until I get it to work with the one and three quarter. Um, <clears throat> weird thing about map threshold and vacuum threshold, I don't know why they have to. Somebody probably knows. It's the same thing, but it's like polar opposites. So if you go above this, here in that vacuum range, it should go into power enrichment. Or, or the map range, yeah, yeah. The map is one way, and this is the uh, almost the opposite. Which doesn't make any sense why you have both ends of the spectrum to do the same job. Anyway, but I've gone in here, and for this, I've just kind of leveled this off. Well, it doesn't really look like it took my change. No, I'm in the... Yeah, there's the compare file. HP2 Energy, you can do comparing. So this one's a stock one. This one's my modified one. And this tells you the difference. I've just leveled this off at 14%. You could do it where this, like the factory one, climbs up with RPM or whatever. But since I'm running in boost and I can tune it, I'd rather just put all all my tuning right here rather than rely on that so I don't want that to move 
If I need to add fuel, I'll add fuel right here. But I'm going to go do some runs, and I've got to play with this to make sure that it goes uh, on my scanner. I don't think it ever goes in the open loop when you're on it. But uh, you, what I did notice is that you'll see that fuel corrections drop off. Short-term fuel trims just go to zero, which is what you want. You don't want it leaning it out while you're in boost. So I'm going to go down the road, get in the throttle without the boost tube hooked up, still unhooked, and make sure that at roughly, you know, 50% throttle, 60% under medium load that it goes into power enrichment. So I'm not playing, trying to add fuel while the computer is still trying to lean itself out. Check this out. On that, uh, on that last stream where I was just talking and rambling and the mouse was in the middle, there was actually there was actually another window open on the page, but for whatever reason, it didn't get caught. So that's why I was just rambling with the mouse just in the middle of the screen. But uh, I've been playing and playing and playing with this, and now I've got it where my 42 on the vacuum. I figured out vacuum looks like you have the lower end of the spectrum, if you can even see this, I hope. And then on map, it's the higher end, and the RPMs, I'll check and I'll see. Hopefully it'll show up. I don't know why it wouldn't. So I've got this to flip at 42. So now I go back to my scanner, and if you watch this, and close loop, whenever it drops below that, the low RPMs, it goes to open loop. So anything above 42, or, or, or below 42 vacuum, kicks into open loop. And then on my... On the higher end, the map threshold, it should stay in power enrichment everywhere else. But I've got to go down the road and test that. So now I've got it going into close or open loop. So now I can go do some fuel tuning. Another adjustment to make. You can see the short terms over here. I've got this set. I hope you can see it. Port to 42, which is its opposite because it's vacuum, so 42 is actually 60, you know, because it, the, the scale's upside down because it's vacuum threshold, not pressure threshold or whatever. So right now, it's it's going in open loop right here, right here at this split. Well, on a, it's not a V8, so almost any throttle, you're up here at about atmospheric, so 42 is not enough. So I need to give it some more so that I enter open loop, probably somewhere around 45. So I'm going to change that, uh, maybe 50. I'll play around a little bit. So I'm going to change this from 42 to 50. And then we're going to try that. That should be a little better because right now under acceleration, it's you can kind of feel it, it lagging or lacking power. And it's still running at 14.7 is probably why. So we're going to do that. Well, this was after a good drive. I didn't really rev it up that high. I'll probably go play on the highway a little bit. But so far, like, these numbers are so small for short terms. I see it. see how bad long terms are. Ah, nothing. But there's not a, a big discrepancy here. So as long as nothing's crazy out here, but you're not going to be at this RPM at low load unless you're free revving. Or, or high RPM cruise, I guess, but but you're really going to be more around here since it's just a six cylinder. But now up in this part, until I get the HP Tuners Pro and can actually hook the wideband to it, I'm kind of going to be guessing tuning. I can look at my wideband and look down at where my map's at and kind of fudge this. And uh, some of it, because this is a, since I doubled the injector size, you know, roughly, this trend that it already has, you know, this trend seems to be pretty good. So if I just give it more across the whole RPM range in that load, in that load area, it seems to work pretty good. So I'm going to guess it to it like that. And then I think maybe next week or shortly, because even on my Dakota, I'd really like to have the, the Pro so I can use the wideband and the other features. But for now, we'll just work with what we got.
I didn't think it was that much faster until I took the tube back off. Doing that has made it so much better to tune. But uh, it's running just fine, wide open, naturally aspirated. So I'm throwing the tube on and I'm going to go drive it again. I didn't think it was that fast with five pounds of boost, but once you take that five pounds away, this thing is a dog. That's going to be it for this video. Don't forget, please like, subscribe, and uh, thank you for watching. It's probably going to be a week before I put out anything else, so I might come up with something else to do. I'm not sure. I don't have the Pro yet, so I can't get too far into tuning. I think that's something that people would like, because I've had to figure a lot of this out myself. There's not a lot of help for people getting into tuning, especially on this older stuff. Any support is greatly appreciated. But I've got some other projects going on too. I've got a 8.8 .8 with a 410 rear end. This thing is a dog. Whatever gear ratio it has, it sucks. So I've been debating whether to get a truss kit or just cut the brackets off this one and put it on. I want to do everything myself, but I don't. I can't make those brackets as efficiently as buying it. By the time I figure out all the engineering and the pickup points, when a couple hundred bucks I can just buy it. The truss is 500 bucks, it's pretty expensive, but it's beefy. There's also Iron Man Fab sells a whole four link for the back triangulator four link with a truss and everything for the 8.8. It's a thousand dollars. So I wanted to build it, but financially it, it doesn't really make any sense. So I'm probably going to buy that kit and weld it on. So I'll be building it myself, or, or installing it myself, but I'll be using someone else's kit. But that costs money, so that's also probably a month away or so.